Hey folks, welcome back. Eric Schneidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. And this is part three of our four part series, How a Thermostat Works. And in this section, we are going to show you how to bench test a digital programmable thermostat like this one. So ordinarily, if I was in the field and I wanted to bench test a thermostat like this one, I would pull it off the wall, um, leave the sub base behind, and test between the pins on the thermostat. But camera-wise, it's kind of hard to show that. So what I'm going to do is I've got the uh, wires connect, some wires connected to the thermostat, and I've got a multimeter uh, connected to the wires. And I'm going to move the camera angle a little bit here and show you how we'll do this uh, using a short section of wire connected to it. Otherwise, it's going to be exactly the same. Now, um, when you do yours, you might have the sub base disconnected from the main thermostat. Totally fine. But I want to caution you on something. It can be a little tricky identifying which pin is associated with which terminal. Because when you pop this sucker off the wall, like so, and you turn it around, it's going to be a mirror image of what the uh, wire terminals are. So it's going to be backwards. As soon as you figure that out, you're off to the races. Uh, this one, by the way, happens to have all of the pins labeled on the board. Not all of them do that. So give me a minute to change the camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to test is we're going to test for a call for heat. And if you remember from part uh, two video, we know that on a call for heat, the thermostat completes a circuit between the R terminal and the W terminal. So I've got my meter is going to be measuring continuity, and I'm going to look for the closure between R and W. So I've got one meter lead attached to the red wire, which is connected to the R terminal. I have another meter lead connected to the uh, white wire, which is connected to the W terminal. And we're going to go ahead and initiate a demand for heat on the thermostat. And then you will see what happens when that calls for heat. So first, let's put it into heat mode. There we go. And we're currently set for 73. And our room temperature is 73, so there is no demand for heat. So let's go ahead and increase the set point up to 79. And then we should have a demand for heat kick in. Boom. There it goes. Notice when the heating icon appeared, the meter started displaying continuity between the R and the W terminal. It's exactly what we want to see. We're going to reduce the set point now. Terminating a call for heat and opening the circuit. Next I'm going to test a demand for fan on by itself. If you recall from our session 2 video, the function of fan on is to complete a circuit between R and G. And that is going to happen on demand. So I am going, I've moved my um, wires, I still have my one terminal lead on the red wire connected to the R terminal, and my other meter lead is connected to the uh, green wire, which is connected to the G terminal. And so now when I select fan on at the thermostat, it should give me continuity between R and G. And there we go. There was a little bit of a delay in there, and that's very common. Switch it back to automatic. And now last but not least, we will do a test measuring from the R terminal to the Y terminal and check for a demand for cooling. Now, first thing we need to do is switch our mode from heat to uh, cool. There we are. And we're currently set for 70 and the room temperature is 73. Which means we should initiate a demand for cooling.
And there we are. If I raise the set point up, demand for cooling is terminated, and the circuit is open. Now, if you recall in session two, I mentioned that on a demand for cooling, we energize between or close the circuit, complete the circuit between R and Y, and also between R and G at the same time. Let's verify that that does in fact happen. I'm going to drop the set point back down again. In this mode right here, you'll notice that my set point is flashing. This is telling me that I'm in a five minute delay period. Because it's been less than five minutes since the last demand for cooling, I have to wait until it allows another demand for cooling to occur. This is to prevent the compressor from rapidly turning off and then rapidly turning back on again. Short cycling the compressor like that can and will lead to compressor damage. And most of our uh, digital thermostats these days have built in compressor protection in the form of a minimum off time or a minimum delay time. There has to be at least five minutes between off and then back on again in order to um, initiate a demand for cooling. So we just have to wait. There we go. Now we are calling for cooling again. I'm going to switch my wire from yellow to G, and I should still have continuity there. And I do. I should even have continuity between G and Y because they are supposed to be connected together in cooling mode. And they are. All right, folks, so hey, that is how you bench test a digital programmable thermostat. Basically, remember that a thermostat is a switch. Switches produce continuity when they're closed, and you can use your continuity to test the contact closure of the various switches in a conventional thermostat. Now, one of the reasons why you'd want to bench test a thermostat is it eliminates the thermostat, it separates the thermostat from the rest of the system. So if you have a question or confusion, is my thermostat the problem? Is the thermostat cable the problem? Or is there a problem with the rest of my machinery? Well, by bench testing the thermostat, you can help isolate which one of those areas is your problem child. Many thermostats do have a built-in test mode, which is really helpful. And you can utilize the test mode to go through each individual function between uh, fan on, between cooling, um, and heat on. And you can do all that from the thermostat and then check to see if the desired results occur down in the mechanical room or out there on the air conditioning unit. Uh, obviously, if everything is working, there's no need to bench test your thermostat. But when you do have a problem, Bench testing the thermostat can help you identify whether you have a thermostat problem, a thermostat cable problem, or something else and determine how to look in the right direction. Folks, thanks for watching. This has been Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor. Don't forget to move on to our fourth installment of How a Thermostat Works called uh, What is Cycle Rate and Why Should I Care? And uh, until then, Thanks for coming, and don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And by the way, don't forget to visit www.hvacservicementor.com. And while you're there, sign up on the email list. Every new subscriber gets a free video training session, full length, three hours. Until next time, see you later. Thanks.